G'day guys, Dan here. I've just got back from the Philippines with Covermore and I have to say I've had the most amazing experience ever. I thought I'd put this video together to help you guys out when you're planning a trip to the Philippines. I'm gonna run through where I went, what I did and what's on offer in the Philippines. Now there's over 7,000 islands so I'm only showing you three of these 7,000 islands, but hopefully some of these tips and the locations that I'm going to tell you about will help you when you're planning a trip and you'll know better what's on offer in those islands and what I did and how you can maybe integrate it into your own trip. Now I flew into Manila from Sydney. Manila, I would say spend one night there. I was happy to spend one night there. It is a hustling and bustling city. There's so much traffic, there's a lot of pollution, there's a lot of craziness. So one night I think is enough to actually get a taste of Manila and then get out of there and jump on a plane and hit one of the other islands. I jumped on a plane the next morning to the island of Bohol. Bohol is only about a one and a half hours flight, so it's pretty easy. I jumped in a tricycle and headed to a beach called Alona Beach. Now Alona Beach isn't overly touristy, but it is a touch touristy. Uh, it is a beautiful beach. If you're into scuba diving, there are so many places there that will take you scuba diving, whether you're a, a beginner or advanced. Alona Beach has some great restaurants. There's a lot of seafood because it's right on the beach, so get stuck into the seafood. Some of the cool attractions that I did there was I did a day trip out to Magasu Falls. Now this is a beautiful waterfall and kind of like lagoon section to swim in. Uh, great for photography, great for, for swim and chill out. And then from there, I went off to the Chocolate Hills. Uh, it's pretty much a full day trip. Uh, Chocolate Hills is probably about an hour and a half's drive from Alona Beach. Uh, also, if you're a photographer, you will love the Chocolate Hills. Chocolate Hills is a, uh, a landscape of these ginormous hills. They're green around the outside and brown on the top, hence the name Chocolate Hills, and there's thousands of them. It was pretty amazing to actually sit there. I actually had it all to myself from the lookout. It's a pretty beautiful location to, to see and uh, very famous for Bohol, so make sure you check that out. If you're interested in swimming with whale sharks, which is one of those once in a lifetime opportunities, you can definitely do that. You can take a day trip from Bohol across to Cebu. Now the whale sharks are swimming in an area called Oslo. Definitely worth trying. Uh, I took a boat trip from Bohol to Cebu so I could start exploring Cebu as my next island. I swam with the whale sharks in the morning. Amazing experience. These creatures are like ginormous puppy dogs. Such an amazing experience to take home. From there, Cebu is huge. You got the east coast or the west coast. Uh, I went up the west coast and I stayed at a place called Mobile. Uh, there's an area that's on the beach, which is just off Mobile, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I think it's called Panaxama. Uh, beautiful area. Now here, def definitely check this place out, but it was so good. Uh, you can rent a motorbike here, like a scooter and cruise around. If you're doing this, make sure you're wearing a helmet. Make sure you're wearing a helmet, we will not be covered with travel insurance, and that will ruin your trip. Uh, most of the locals and the tourists are not wearing helmets, so don't follow suit. Be smart. But while you're here, uh, try and find a nice little backpackers or a little resort right on the water. Here there's a place where you can swim with 100,000 sardines. It is, it is mind blowing. It is truly an experience that I will never forget. Uh, you don't actually even have to book any kind of adventure or activity. Just walk down the street, rent a set of goggles and fins, and then walk out the front of the pier. You swim out 10, 15 meters, and then there is 100,000 sardines just swimming around. I dove down and I was like uh, five minutes underwater and all the sardines were swimming around me in a circle. It is just one of those things I will never forget as well. There were turtles in the water I got to swim with. Uh, the coral and the reef there is just absolutely magical. That area, definitely worth visiting. From there, you can jump in a taxi or a bus and go straight to Cebu City. Cebu City is another big, hustling, bustling city. Kind of similar to Manila, uh, but not as big. 
Uh, it was good, but it wasn't really my cup of tea. So I kind of went to Cebu, spent one night so I could jump on an aeroplane and make it to my next island. Now the next island I went to was the island of Palawan. I flew into the airport called Puerto Princesa. Now my tip here is go north. North to the very top. It's about a six hour drive in a van to an area called El Nido. Now my tip for you guys here is when you get to the airport or when you're on the aeroplane, make friends with some tourists or some backpackers. Because once you end up at Porta Princesa, there's gonna be a whole heap of minivans at the front. Now you need to negotiate a price to actually jump in that minivan and drive six hours north. It'll cost you about 500 peso for a seat to drive north. But that van will not leave until the van is filled with about nine tourists. So if you jump in a van and there's only two tourists and all other vans have nine and they take off, you pretty much will have to wait there till the next flight comes in till they fill up your van or you buy out every single seat on that van and then drive north. So your best bet is when you're waiting for your luggage at Porto Princesa, start chatting with some of the tourists that are on your flight and say, are you guys going to El Nido? Do you want to jump in the same van together and then we can leave as soon as possible? Now the drive to El Nido isn't the most amazing drive in the sense that it is a long windy road for about six hours straight. Now you will stop a few times to have food and stretch your legs, but it is a long drive. There is another option. You can fly in to El Nido. There's only a few flights a day. I believe you may have to fly from Manila. So if you're on another island, you may have to fly to Manila and then jump on another, another flight to El Nido. The flights aren't super cheap, but they're not overly expensive either. If you don't want to do that six hour drive, I totally recommend that. Next time I go to El Nido, I will be flying in and flying out. I've experienced that drive, it was good. It was nice driving through all those villages and towns, but I don't think I'd want to do that again. Now when you're in El Nido, I recommend staying on the beach. The beach is absolutely magical. There are so many long tail boats all in the water. Now these long tail boats are the boats that you go out and do your day trips. And this is the, probably the most magical part of El Nido is jumping on these boats and exploring the islands that surround El Nido. Now the day trips, there's so many different places in the town where you can actually book a day trip. And they've kind of tailored the day trips into A, B, C, and D. Now, what I mean by this is that in A, there will be four or five islands that you go visit. And then in B, there's a separate four or five islands. Now you only do those islands which are inside that category. So you kind of need to choose which islands you want to do. And maybe you'll do two or three day trips. But from memory, I think A and C were the best options. I actually did it a little bit different. I actually chose the islands that I wanted to see. So I chose a few from different categories and rented out my own boat. This is a lot more expensive, but I got to see the islands that I wanted to see and do it at my own pace. If you want to spend the money and do it at your own pace and have no one telling you what to do, uh, and you can actually leave a little bit earlier in the morning because you're not waiting for anyone to actually jump on the boat to fill the boat out. You just leave first thing in the morning. If you're a photographer and you want to get some beautiful pictures of the islands and of the lagoons and the secret beaches with no one on them, I would highly recommend renting a boat with just you and your friends and go leave maybe an hour before the rest of the boats leave. But when you're in El Nido, definitely do these boat trips. I'd have to say it is the most beautiful water I've ever seen in my entire life. I was absolutely blown away. The photography I was actually able to capture on these islands, the water, how crystal clear, the fish, the, the coral, everything, and all the secret beaches like swimming through caves and popping up at the other end and just having this hidden beach there. Absolutely magical. I'd have to say the highlight of my whole entire trip was El Nido. If I had to go back and I could only choose one location, it would definitely be hands down El Nido. So guys, when you're booking a trip to the Philippines, out of the 7,000 islands, I've only seen a handful of them, but I'd say if you're gonna go visit any of the locations I did, go visit El Nido. It will absolutely blow your mind. Guys, enjoy your time planning and setting up a trip to the Philippines. If you're already planned, Please integrate some of these areas and hopefully uh, my tips will actually help 
your trip become a lot more enjoyable and you'll be able to actually see some of the things that I got to see. It's safe travels and enjoy your time in the Philippines. <laughs>